All right, so we've already talked about double slit interference. And so if you get what's happening with double slit interference, then you can understand what's happening with single slit interference. So obviously single slit interference is when you have one opening and we have light of some wavelength here traveling through the opening, right? And this opening has a width of D. And I'm gonna shine this light on a screen over here, right? And this screen, just like in double slits, the distance from the slit to the screen is a distance L, right? So everything looks the same, except there's only one opening instead of two. So what would you expect to see if I shine light through a single opening? Maybe you would expect, right, maybe rightly so, that it would kind of look like this. I'd get a big bright spot in the middle and then it would kind of taper off, right? And you would be right if this opening is large. So remember, when the opening is on the same order as the size of the wavelength, that's when you start to see diffraction. So what you're really going to see in this case is you're going to see this big bright spot in the middle, but on the outsides you're going to see a bright spot and then a dark spot and then a big bright spot in the middle and then a dark spot and then a bright spot and you get a diffraction pattern. So it looks different than a double slit, right? You have one big central maximum and then you have a couple of uh, less bright maximas further out, right? But you get dark spots here and here and here and here you're actually getting dark spots. So light going through a single slit is interfering with itself and showing up on that screen, which may seem kind of weird to you. And so you think about what's happening, right? So let's look at, like we talked about with double slits, how light interferes with itself. So let's look at a dark spot, right? Because we, at this point, we should get how the bright spot shows up in the middle because they travel the same distance. But let's say light traveling to this dark spot right here. So light from the top of the slit, remember Huygens principle, each of these parts pieces of the wave right here going through acts like its own wave source. So light from the top of the slit is traveling this distance here. Light from the bottom of the slit travels this distance. And so if you look, if I drop a perpendicular line down, there's this little difference here, right? That the bottom wave is traveling further than the top wave, right? And that is called the path difference, right? And so remember the path difference is the one where if it's a multiple of a whole wavelength, you get constructive interference. And if it's a multiple of a half wavelength, you get destructive interference. And so for single slits, it's a little more complicated because it has to do with light at different points in here. Because remember, it's not just the top and the bottom. It's in the middle and it's halfway up and it's halfway down, right? There's a lot of different points of light. But basically what happens is this light is interfering with itself and that's what causes the single slit diffraction pattern to show up. Okay, so let's look at the equations for this, right? So just like a double slit, the equations are exactly the same. So we have xm is m lambda L over D, right? Where xm, in this case, xm is the distance from the center to a dark fringe, right? So this is going to be xm. Or I could measure from the center right here down to this dark fringe. That's xm. And m is the order number, right? So the order is a little bit different from double slits. With double slits, whole numbers were bright spots, half numbers were dark spots. It's kind of opposite here. So the first dark spot is m equals 1 on either side. And the second dark spot is m equals 2 on either side. So in this case, xm is the distance from the center to a dark fringe, and m is the dark fringe order number. Right? So m equals 1, m equals 2, m equals 3. And remember, this is showing you dark spots. I can't emphasize that enough. That's how this is different from double slits. You're not looking at bright and dark. You're looking at only dark spots. And then, right, we know lambda. Lambda is the wavelength of the light. L is the distance from the slit to the screen, right, just like in double slits. And D now, D is different. So D before was the diff distance between the two slits. Now D is the width of the slit. And another thing if you want the width, the width of the central maximum, if you want that, the width of the central maximum, half of it is xm, right? So if you want the whole width of the center bright spot, it's just double whatever xm was. So it's just going to be 2 times our xm, which is the distance from the center to the first dark fringe. Okay, so let's take this and solve a problem. So here's my problem. I've got a single slit, light of 550 nanometers is going through it, and I see a diffraction pattern. And 
this second spot here, the second dark spot shows up at an angle of 45 degrees. I want to know two things. I want to know the width of the slit and I want to know the angle of the first minimum. So the key here when you're using single slits is we're talking about dark fringes, right? I don't care about the bright fringes. I care about the dark fringes. So right here, this first spot is M equals one and the second spot is M equals two. And I'm trying to find the width of the slit. So the width of the slit is D. And I know theta, right? Theta is 45 degrees, so I'm going to have to figure out this. That's theta 1 that I'm trying to figure out, right? So I can't use this first equation because there's no L. I don't know the distance of the screen, but that doesn't matter because if you look at the second equation, I can use it. I know M. I know wavelength. I know the angle. I can solve for D, right? So I'm going to say M lambda equals D sine theta. And if I rearrange this to solve for D, D is M lambda over sine theta. So if I plug that in, uh, the thing that I know is the second point, the second dark spot, right? So m is going to be 2. Lambda is 550 nanometers, so that's 550 times 10 to the minus 9 over the sine of the angle, and the angle I said is 45 degrees for the second dark spot. And if you do this, you end up with 1.56 times 10 to the minus sixth meters. So that's the width of the slit, 1.50, that's what, 1.56 micrometers, which is pretty small. And so that should make sense, right? Because the wavelength of the light, 550 nanometers is 5.5 times 10 to the minus seven. So it's on the same order, right? This wouldn't work if the wavelength was much bigger or smaller. Okay, so the second one, theta of the first minimum. Same equation, right? Because I want theta. So M lambda equals D sine theta. Now I want to solve for theta, right? So let's divide the d over. So m lambda over d equals sine theta. So that means if I do my trig functions that the angle is going to equal the inverse sine of m lambda over d. So m is 1. My wavelength is still 550 times 10 to the minus 9. And getting close there. And then D is the answer I got here. So it's 1.56 times 10 to the minus sixth. And so if I do this, take the inverse sine of one times the wavelength divided by the distance that I just got, you should get an angle of 20.7 degrees, as long as you're in degrees and not radians. So not too bad. The whole key with single slit interference is that you're talking about dark fringes. The two equations are exactly the same. L is the same thing, right? L is still the distance to the screen. XM is still measuring how far the fringes are, except now we're talking about dark fringes, right? And D is now not the distance between the slit, but it's the width of the slit. But if you can remember like what everything means, solving them is pretty simple.